Hello and welcome back year 9. Um, welcome back to the plants topic. Last lesson we looked at the required practical, um, looking at how does the rate of photosynthesis get affected by the light intensity. Today we're looking at the question, why do we grow plants in a greenhouse? And linking it to the other factors, limiting factors, that will affect photosynthesis as well. So at the top of your page, please can you make sure you've got your driving question underlined. Um, put the date there as well. This will just help you keep your work organised. The keywords for today's lesson are photosynthesis, optimum, limiting factor, carbon dioxide, temperature, stomata, light intensity and concentration. Now, some of these words we will have been using over the last lessons. Hopefully we've got some confidence in using those. Optimum, um, limiting factor and concentration will probably be new for today. Um, but again, we'll, we'll crop up a lot in, in various other science lessons. Optimum means uh, kind of the best, I suppose. So the optimum temperature for cooking a, you know, pie might be, say, um, 200 degrees C. Like it will be a, the best temperature for it. Um, limiting factor is, a, is basically what today's lesson is all about. Um, they're going to be factors that limit. So things about something that will reduce something's effectiveness, I suppose. And concentration is to, is not to do with how hard you can focus, but rather how much of something there is in a given volume. So usually talking about in terms of chemicals, like the concentration of carbon dioxide in the air would be how much carbon dioxide is there in a, you know, one litre of air, for instance. Right. What are we uh, what are we doing? Why are we learning about plants? Well, plants are fundamental to um, to ecosystems, especially um, all, all animals rely on plants to get their energy. So plants take their energy from the sun. They uh, they use that energy in an endothermic reaction photosynthesis to make sugar, which is a store of chemical energy. And animals need plants to 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 get that sugar. Maybe some animals eat other animals, some animals eat plants. Either way, all animals, including humans, need plants. So by understanding plants better, we can help improve agriculture, um, which is kind of what today's lesson is all about, looking at greenhouses. But also by understanding, we can help protect and preserve our environments as well. Right, start questions. What is the word equation for photosynthesis? And what is the symbol equation for photosynthesis? Um, remember the rule uh, just with lots of sixes, 666 for that, the symbol equation. Please pause the video. When you come back, we'll go through the answers. OK, welcome back. Hopefully you'll recognise this slide. We've seen this loads of times before, and these are the answers to the starter questions. Photosynthesis is a chemical reaction that happens inside the cells of plants. And um, the reactants are water and carbon dioxide. And the products are glucose and oxygen. Glucose being the whole point of photosynthesis and oxygen being a byproduct that we can we can measure uh, if we look at the number of bubbles we saw last lesson. The symbol equation, six H2Os plus six carbon dioxides, CO2s, makes one glucose, one C6H12O6 and six O2s. Um, the numbers are really important in symbol equations as you've got the large number in front of the molecule is how many of them there are, and the small numbers within them are how many of uh, how many atoms of that type are there. So H2 means there are two hydrogens in water. H12 means that there are 12 hydrogens in glucose. Okay. Again, you are going to need to know this um, equation inside and out. This is this is a very important equation for for all of biology. Um, you are just going to have to learn this by rote, unfortunately. The, the, the most important thing really is the word equation. Um, yeah, I, you, you need to know the products and reactants for what we're looking at today. I've also put light in there um, because it is an endothermic reaction. It requires light energy to happen. Right, last lesson, hopefully you would, uh, well, from last lesson, you hopefully will recognise this. We used pondweed, put it underwater, we measured the rate of photosynthesis by looking at how many bubbles were produced, which is because bubbles were a product. Um, and and the, the, the key thing to take away there is that we saw that higher light intensity meant more bubbles. 
or high light intensity meant faster photosynthesis. In today's lesson, we are going to look at the other factors that will also affect the rate of photosynthesis. You could describe light intensity as a limiting factor on the rate of photosynthesis. This means that, uh, well, a limiting factor is anything that when in short supply stops photosynthesis happening at its maximum rate. So if there's not enough of it, the chemical reaction will not be able to happen fast enough. That's what effectively means. You need to know the definition of a limiting factor um, and you will be tested on it later on. This will be in the um, in the after the lesson quizzes, but also in the uh, described section of today's objective questions at the end. So a limiting factor is something that if there's not enough of it, it will slow down the rate of reaction. A limiting factor is anything in short supply that stops photosynthesis happening at its maximum rate. What do you think the other two factors are that will affect the rate of photosynthesis? A clue would be what were the control variables in our investigation last time? Well, the three limiting factors that you need to know for the rate of photosynthesis are light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration and temperature. OK, these are the three. You might just have to memorize them. But um, if when when creating investigations on light intensity, these are the things you must control. Perhaps one of them would be your independent variable, but then the other two would be your um, depend uh, sorry, your control variables. For instance, if you wanted to look at how does temperature affect the rate of photosynthesis, you must control the carbon dioxide concentration, perhaps with um, by limiting the fact uh, that that's um, sodium hydrogen carbonate concentration in the water, or light intensity you will control by making sure that the distance from the lamp is the same. Okay, does that make sense? Concentration meaning how much carbon dioxide there is in a given volume. We'll talk about that in just a second. So what do these mean? Light intensity is how bright the light is getting to the chloroplasts. Carbon dioxide concentration is the amount of carbon dioxide the plant has access to in a given volume. So this could be um, how much CO2 there is in a litre of air, for instance, or it could even be percentage. And temperature is how hot it is. The, temp the temperature affecting the rate of photosynthesis would be the temperature of the plant measured in degree C or uh, you could use a, th a thermometer to measure that as well. Right, light intensity, what does that mean? If the light is not bright enough then photosynthesis can't take place, therefore it's a limiting factor. Chloroplasts require light for the endothermic reaction that's photosynthesis, so it requires this energy to happen. Carbon dioxide concentration Carbon dioxide is a reactant in photosynthesis. If there is not enough CO2, then the rate of, then the rate of photosynthesis is limited too. Okay. Concentration um, is something that crops up a lot in physics and chemistry. Uh, it's to do with how much of something there is in a volume. So for instance, the difference between strong squash and weak squash would be it's the concentration of squash compared to the total volume of liquid. Or, or perhaps with how much water there is as well. So strong squash, you've got a lot of squash per glass, and weak squash, not very much squash per full glass of, of water. Does that make sense? And carbon dioxide is just uh, this is a compound. Uh, it's in the air. We talked about it a lot in chemistry, especially in KC3. Uh, CO2 has got one carbon in it and two oxygens. The carbon in C6H12O6 comes from the CO2 in the air. So um, I suppose the backbone of this glucose molecule comes from CO2 in the air. And so if there's not enough CO2, then you, you're not going to be able to produce as much glucose, limiting the rate of photosynthesis. And finally, temperature. Now, um, this one's a little bit more complicated. It's the link to um, collision theory, which is uh, in chemistry and physics, saying how, why do chemical reactions happen? OK, and uh, we'll use these diagrams to explain in just a second. Temperature is a limiting factor in all chemical reactions. K 
chemical reactions require collisions between particles and hotter particles have more energy and collide more often, therefore will increase the rate of the reaction. We, uh, we've seen this diagram before, um, we've got particles of a gas inside a box, they're moving around rapidly in random directions and banging into the sides, okay? We know that if a hotter gas, the particles could be moving more, okay? It's a similar idea in, in collision theory. Um, if we wanted to go from a liquid to a gas, what would we do? We heat it up, we add, we increase the temperature, and this increases the energy the particles have. A chemical reaction, the particles must crash into each other. They must physically connect. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to reshuffle those atoms. And so hotter uh, environment a chemical reaction is happening in, the particles are moving more. They're more likely to, to react. And when they do bump into each other, they, they do so with more energy. And hopefully that will be enough to react. So higher temperatures mean generally speaking, higher rates of reaction. And in photosynthesis, there's no um, exception. Okay, quiz time. Um, read each one of these boxes and please decide which box answers the question, what is a limiting factor best? Pause the video when you come back, we'll go through the answers. The answer is A. A limiting factor is something that, when in short supply, prevents a reaction happening at its maximum rate. Woof, long sentence, but that is the definition, and you do need to know it. Okay, again, this is the type. Uh, this is the time of the lesson where normally I would ask you to turn to your partner, turn to your peer sitting next to you, and try to explain what is going on. Okay, what are the three limiting factors of photosynthesis? Now, unfortunately, we're not in the lab and most of us won't be uh, sitting with people doing the same lesson as us. So what I would like you to do now is to get up away from the computer and go and tell someone the answer. This could be your parents, uh, sibling, pet, neighbour, it doesn't really matter. I'd like you to stop them from stop them doing what they're doing and say out loud what the three limiting factors are of photosynthesis. And if you can, why do they limit photosynthesis? When you come back, we'll go through... Uh, what my answer to that would be. Okay, good luck. Go have a conversation about photosynthesis. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you've had a, a good conversation. They probably were asking about what are you talking about and hopefully you'd you be able to give some context as well. Uh, what were those limiting factors? Can you remember? Well, light intensity. If the light is not bright enough, then photosynthesis can't take place. Chloroplasts require light for the endothermic reaction. That's photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide concentration is another limiting factor. Carbon dioxide is a reactant. If there's not enough, then photosynthesis cannot happen or will not happen fast enough or as fast as if there was more. Temperature. Temperature is a limiting factor in all chemical reactions. Chemical reactions require collisions between particles and hotter particles have more energy and collide more often. So that's the explanations as well as what those are, which you do need to know for the explain task today. Right, let's link this back to agriculture. Um, what is this? Is a greenhouse? Um, hope, well, most most of you will know what these are. They they are um, basically places where you that will increase plant growth if you put your plant inside them, and the the way they work is linked to these limiting factors, okay? So um, this is the link to how do we improve the yield of our crops? People need to eat plants or at least animals that have eaten plants. So where are we getting our energy from? It's through agriculture and through using greenhouses. So there's links to the three limiting factors. Light intensity is not, is reduced, uh, sorry, the the, the, the amount that light intensity reduces photosynthesis is reduced. So with bearing in mind that light intensity will affect the rate of photosynthesis, you, uh, light, uh, greenhouses allow light to enter. They can be very bright inside. The carbon dioxide concentration must be kept high. So it allows a high concentration of CO2 inside. That too should be subscript, smaller. The temperature, um, if you've ever went, if you've ever been in a greenhouse, you sh you will notice that the 
the air feels very different inside than outside. And one of the main differences is that it's actually warmer. It's a lot warmer inside, especially in the UK, um, where the outside temperature can be quite cold. Maintain They maintain a temperature close to the optimum temperature for photosynthesis. Again, optimum is a key word for today's lesson. That, meaning, uh, that means close to the best temperature for photosynthesis. Can you think of any additional features a greenhouse could have to improve crop yield further? So linking to these limiting factors, what extras could you add to it to improve them? Well, uh, light, uh, to, uh, the link to light intensity, greenhouses are made of glass or clear plastic, which allows as much light as possible to enter from outside. Some even have lamps, so at night time, they can continue to give light for photosynthesis. This ensures there's enough light for the plants to grow. Carbon dioxide concentration. Greenhouses should be well ventilated. Some may even have propane burners. Now, uh, propane is a, um, it comes from fossil fuels. And when you uh, do combustion, it produces carbon dioxide. When you burn propane, it produces CO2. And so some greenhouses, they actually burn fossil fuels inside and that release of CO2 can be used by plants for photosynthesis. So making sure there's enough CO2 to react. And as greenhouses let in light, but keep the heat in, they maintain their temperature above the outside temperature. Some have thermometers, which can be connected to vents that will open or close depending if it's too hot or too cold. Some of them even have heaters. Attack. So the central heating systems in certain ones. OK, so maintaining the temperature, allowing carbon dioxide um, and. Maximizing light intensity are, are features of greenhouses that allow the maximum rate of photosynthesis to speed up, I suppose, the growth of your crops. Slide. The greenhouse will have a balance of these features to allow the optimum rate of photosynthesis. Right, time for the writing phase. Please, can you make sure that all of your sentences are in full? Um, make sure you are um, you've got the driving question at the top as well. So, why do we grow plants in a greenhouse? Is your driving question at the top, and then work your way through full sentences, paragraph form. Can you have a go at answering these um, questions one at a time? So first of all, the describe section. I'd like you just to describe what is meant by limiting factor. So define it. What does limiting factor mean? Second, the explain task. Explain which factors could limit the rate of photosynthesis. So this isn't just to say what they are, because there are three and hopefully you remember what those are. But what, uh, so why? Are they limiting factors? Not easy. That's why it's worth around grade four or five. The U section, I'd like you to explain how a greenhouse is designed to control the rate of photosynthesis. So using our understanding of the limiting factors, how do greenhouses work? This will also be answering the driving question. And finally, the combined section, design an experiment to see how temperature affects the rate of photosynthesis. This is not easy, which I suppose is why it's linked to the grade eight or nine. Um, um, very similar to the required practical that we looked at last lesson, in, but instead of how does light intensity affect photosynthesis, I'd like you to have a think, how would you do an investigation of temperature against photosynthesis? Use last lesson for inspiration, this is not easy. Um, outline what the variables are, talk about the equipment you would use, talk about the amounts of, of, uh, of, of things that you would use. Um, good luck. Give yourself about 10 to 15 minutes on this. Uh, once you come back, um, we'll go through some answers and do some marking. Make use of the keywords that are at the bottom. OK, good luck, your nine. Thank you. OK, well done. Uh, well done for your work, guys. Welcome back. Um, again, it's not easy to, to be able to explain these things, especially in, in, in a new context like a greenhouse. So well done, first of all. Good job. Let's, let's have a look at uh, marks.
Okay, so as always, grab yourself a green pen, or it doesn't have to be green as long as it's different to the one that you were writing with, and give yourself some ticks when you've got the answers correct, okay? Especially with, uh, especially with the um, yellow and the blue section. Um, I didn't give you a lot of help from the lesson, but hopefully from, from the work that we've done, you, you'll be able to grab some marks out of there. And then also, if you're missing any detail, it's really impressive to see the edits that you've made um, following the work that you've done. So please do make use of these pens. <coughs> so what is a limiting factor? A limiting factor is anything that when in short supply stops photosynthesis happening at its maximum rate. The explain section is, so again, not just listing light intensity, CO2 concentration and temperature, but saying why they are limiting factors. Light intensity um, is one, because if the light is not bright enough, then photosynthesis can't take place. Chloroplasts require light for the endothermic reaction photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide is a reactant in photosynthesis. So if there is not enough CO2, then the rate of photosynthesis is limited to. And temperature is a limiting factor in all chemical reactions. Temp uh, chemical reactions require collisions between particles and hotter particles have more energy and collide more often. So there we are. On to the U section. So this is the link from the uh, limiting factors into a greenhouse. Greenhouses are made from glass or clear plastic, which will allow as much light as possible to enter from the outside. Some even have lamps for nighttime to ensure there is enough light for the plants to grow. Greenhouses should be well ventilated. Some may have propane burners. Combustion produces carbon dioxide. This is to ensure there is enough carbon dioxide to react. As greenhouses let in light but keep in the heat, they can often maintain temperatures above the outside temperature. Some have thermometers connected to vents that open when it gets too hot and heaters for when it gets too cold. And finally, onto the combined section, um, I've split my answer up into two slides. The first one being um, explanation of what the variables are. And then the second one being actual step by step instructions on how I would do this. Obviously, I've got the advantage of knowing what kind of equipment that we've got available in the lab. But hopefully following the lesson from last uh, last lesson uh, on the required practical, which was very similar to this, you've still been able to be quite creative and how to have a think about how would you do this investigation. So what are the variables? The independent variable, the thing that we're changing is the temperature. Now, I would use. Uh, pondweed and so it would be the temperature of the water that the pondweed is sitting in. I would measure this with a thermometer and I would change the temperature by adding water from a kettle or perhaps a water bath, heating it up, changing the temperature. The dependent variable, which is the thing that we measure or we, we see the effect of the independent variable on it, is the rate of reaction. Just like last time, we'll measure it by counting the bubbles per minute. I would use a tally chart and a stopwatch to make sure that I've got a minute's worth of uh, data collection. And my control variables, now this is the link to the, uh, the other two um, limiting factors, is light intensity must be kept the same because it would also affect the rate of reaction we know. So the lamp must stay the same distance from the um, weed every time, same distance, because we know the distance affects rate of reaction. Another control variable could be carbon dioxide concentration. We must add the same amount of sodium hydrogen carbonate each time, as sodium hydrogen carbonate will um, affect the amount of carbon dioxide available to the plant. Another one that we haven't really mentioned, but would affect it, is the same size or mass of pondweed each time. So different masses obviously might produce different amounts of um, oxygen, so that must be kept the same. So step by step, how would I do this? Firstly, I would put 10 grams of pondweed into a boiling tube with one spatula of sodium hydrogen carbonate and 15 millilitres of water. Place the boiling tube in a beaker of water with a thermometer in it and place the, beak place the beaker 10 centimetres away from an LED lamp. Measure and record the temperature of the water in the beaker. Wait five minutes to allow the pondweed to acclimatise. 
and ensure the water temperature remains at a constant temperature while this happens. We record the number of bubbles produced in one minute using a tally chart and a stopwatch. Repeat three times and record an average number of bubbles per minute. I spelled minute wrong there. Repeat the investigation for temperatures of 5 degrees C, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 and 45 degrees C. On a graph, plot the mean number of bubbles per minute against the temperature. Next lesson, we will, be, we will see what the results might look like um, as we are going to be looking at how these limiting factors affect the rate of photosynthesis uh, graphically. OK, thank you so much for your patience uh, today, Year 9. Again, uh, lots of high concept stuff um, and, and all of it is linked back to that, that photosynthesis equation, which, again, in the first place, is not that easy to get your head around. So I'm, re I'm really proud of how, how well we're doing today. Um, on the back of that, it's important to, to know what kind of skills that we've been using, which is why we're going to be using the Today I've Achieved sentence. So please, can you write, today I've achieved a describe, explain, use or combine because I can and say why. For instance, if you were working at a grade five to six today, if you managed to explain how a greenhouse is designed to control the rate of photosynthesis, if you did the yellow section, then could you write the sentence, today I have achieved a use because I can explain how a greenhouse is designed to control the rate of photosynthesis. Make sense? We've done this a hundred times before. Um, please pause the video and have a go at that. Now, thank you. Right, that's it. Thank you so much for, uh, again, listening so well, you're nine. Um, as always, we've got a 10 question show my homework quiz right at the very uh, at the end so once you've done this please go to show my homework and complete the quiz uh quick test to see what you can remember okay thank you so much guys see you next time for more work on limiting factors of photosynthesis